Hello and welcome to another budget and legged video. Now this is part three of this Renault Master. Um, so what we're doing today is in a tie rod, track rod end, CV boot. Now I'm not looking forward to the CV boot because they're quite difficult on these. So we're going to crack on. Now how do I know that the inner tie rod is gone and not the tie rod or the track rod or whatever? Uh, basically when you grab the wheel there should be no movement. It might not come across on camera but there is movement there. You might be able to hear it and there's no movement up and down. So normally when there's movement side to side it's normally either the track rod end or the inner tie rod. If you've got movement both ways it can be bearings, it can be bottom board joints. This has two board joints, a top and a bottom. But I know it's the inner tie rod and the way I basically know now if you had two people it's a lot easier. If you get someone to rock the wheel and if you hold the inner tie rod, it'd just be easy if I showed you. So basically this is the inner tie rod and the track rod end. Now the easiest way to do it, and you, someone rocks the wheel. Now sometimes you can physically see movement in the ball joint. But if you can't see any movement in the ball joint, well then it's most probably your inner tie rod. And the way to do it is, as someone is rocking the wheel, if you put your hand on it like that, you'll feel through your hand if there's movement. Vice versa, put your hand on here and again you'll feel, you'll physically feel through your hand. It is easier with two people. So when I did it, I felt that there was movement in the inner tie rod. And again, like I always say, it's best to do both sides. The other side there was no movement in it but I've done the other side because it's, it's just best to. This is the side where there was actually physical movement in it and also this is the side where the CV boot is gone which is just a nightmare on these things. But anyway, so we'll whip off the wheel which is a 24mm. Now, the dog can see the rabbit. I don't know if that's coming through, I might have to get a light on. So, here we go. So, like I said, I'm gonna do the CV joint first, or the CV boot, because that is horrible and awkward. And hopefully I don't have to undo the top wishbone. Um, I can just hopefully do the bottom, but we'll see. Because these do have a big problem with the bottom uh, bolt. You have to get them so tight because otherwise the ball joint comes loose and it's so tight to the point of you think the bolt's going to snap. But what I'm going to have to do regardless first is I'm going to have to take off the CV joint, CV joint, the track rod end which is a 22mm socket and again if you have an air gun so much easier. much easier with an air gun. So the easiest way to disconnect the track rod end from the hub is get a hammer. And just keep hitting. And eventually it just pops off. Now this was the noise, it might not come across on camera, but this was the problem. It is. Hopefully you can hear that. Now that was the wobble I was getting out of the steering wheel. And like I said, you hold the, tra you hold the inner tie rod and as you move it, you can feel the movement through it. So, we're on the other side now. And I'm hoping I can get away with this, because I might not be able to. But I need to disconnect the shock and I need to take out the middle bolt that holds the actual CV joint in. 
and hopefully I only have to disconnect the bottom ball joint and then basically leave it out enough to get the CV joint out should be sorted then but if not I'm gonna have to take the top ball joint off now it's only one more bolt when you think it's only one more bolt it's not a big deal but just these are awkward they're just awkward unfortunately and you have to be careful tightening the bottom one back because it has to be so tight it has to be scarily tight stupidly tight so I need to get a special socket with 11 or 12 um, sides on it I can't remember exactly now and uh, we'll whip off this but first I can take off the centre one which is a 32 mil So as you can see from these two sockets, this is the special socket we need rather than the uh, six sides or one, two, three, four, five, six, yes, the six sides. Now you can't use these on a normal bolt because you can round the bolt and same again, you can't use this. They're both 21s, as you can see, that fits nice and easy, 21mm doesn't fit. Do you think go to 22? Again, 22 doesn't fit. 23 fits, but it's it's loose, so you're just going to damage that bolt. And it is only a 21. Yeah. See, right tools, easy. Take this shock off. The reason we're taking the shock off is it's easier then to push down on the bottom wishbone. So I need to. Now, the little bushing hasn't come with it. But I wouldn't worry about that. I'm going to leave that there. And then I'm going to take off this bolt on the bottom board joint. Looks like a 19. It's an 18. Now I'm trying to get this out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to screw the nut back on until it's flush with the bolt, so we don't damage any threads. Now this isn't the best thing to do, but it's the only thing I can do, because I've had problems with this bolt before. So, let's see if this works. Now it has. I didn't hit that hard, so I'm not going to do any damage. I'm screwing the bolt off with my fingers as well, so we know we haven't damaged the threads. Yeah. Still stuck in there, but at least it's not tight. Should just get a little punch and hit it through. But I used one of these. You shouldn't do that, but that's what the closest thing I can. Just been too lazy to get me punch. Now, so I'm hoping now we can disconnect this bottom wishbone and just kind of lift the hub out enough it should hopefully spin on this 
top ball joint enough for me to get the drive shaft out. Fingers crossed. And what I'm going to use for this, you've seen this on other videos, it's a big long bar basically to help me take down this board, uh, wishbone on my own, supposedly. It does work sometimes, but then sometimes you do need a bit of help. Now the whole thing's coming down. So I'm pushing down on even the, if you can see that, pushing down the whole thing. I know it's coming. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to. No, I'm pushing down on the top wishbone as well. So the whole thing's coming down at once. Which isn't great. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get someone to hold this and I'm going to tap the bar with a hammer and hopefully shock the thing down. John! Hello. Set the dogs off. Now, lucky enough there's someone here because if there's not, it would just mean it's a nightmare. But this still might not work. We'll give it a go. Ready? Bring a bigger hammer, that's the problem. You get some lube. Right, all you need to crack one of these off is you need a John. Once you've got a John, now I think you can buy John on eBay. Um, postage depends on where you are to how much the postage is, but you buy a John, you only have to you don't have to buy him once. It doesn't take much, just feed him and uh, yeah, and then you buy a John and this is what happened. Look. There we go. Once you buy a John, sorted. Right, hopefully now we have enough room in this to pull it like that and get that out. I need an air gun now for this. Right, what I have now is I have an air chisel. And hopefully, hopefully now this is going to be enough, uh, enough movement to get this out. Not, I'm in trouble. And it's not. Shit. Nope. We doesn't look like. You need a John. I need a, I need a John again. Have you got a big pair of Stilsons? A big pair of Stilsons. Now you're now you're talking tools. There's four tools here now. Me, you and these two. <laughs> Job on! Hey? Job on! See? See? That's what you get when you buy a John. Now, I would say if you are doing this on your own, take out the bottom bolt, but... If you've got someone else, don't. <laughs> now, this is a very messy job, no matter how you do it. So, you are going to get oily. First thing I'm going to do is just cut off these old clips. The one to come off, that is. Now, that's one. And number two. do this and not get in the way of the camera sometimes it's quite difficult now 
is where it gets really messy. So I'm going to cut this old boot off because I've got a stretchy boot. So that means I don't have to take the whole CV joint off, which saves time. Saves a lot of time. So literally now, I'm just going to cut this off. Decent knife, it might help. A serrated kitchen knife. Let me get this fucker off. Nah. Off. Lovely. Right, I am ready to put the new CV boot on and lucky enough with this special CV boot and this tool here, we don't need to take the CV joint off. This, as you can see, is the next one. opens up. Now, you need a special CV boot, so you need a stretchy boot. So this, this is designed to stretch. You put it over the top just until it's poking out and press it and as you can see it opens the CV boot up for me and then it means I can literally oh pressing the button and it just slots over you release the pressure and slide this off and there we go, magic. Right, so what we need to do now is pack this full of grease. You get new grease with, um, with the kit, so you might as well use it. And what you wanna do, very messy, that's the problem with CV boots. You wanna put the CV boot on first before you do this. And what you're trying to do is you squeeze this in, all the gaps, let this work its way in. There's no point just leaving it on top because that's going to do you no good. So you want to get that in nice all the way, just like that. Now we can actually bring the boot across and fit it in. Such a messy job this. Now I just have to clean my hands and get that a little bit better than that. Right, this is just messy unfortunately, but I've pushed this on so the connection for the big one at least is on. I need to do this before it slides off. So basically what I'm doing is just putting that in there, getting that clipped on to make it as tight as I can, which is there physically can't get that any tighter. You have to make sure it's on all the way around and it's on evenly. And then you can, this is a special tool for clamping it. It clamps it both and you can see the little pin comes up through the middle. You don't particularly need this, um, some side cutters will do, but this is just obviously made for the job. So what you need to do is get it on there and then just literally squeeze it together. Now, simple as that. That I squeeze it together, that's now on, not going to go anywhere. We need to do exactly the same to the one at the back. But the one at the back is obviously smaller. It's just unfortunately a really messy job to do these. I hate CV boots and CV joints. Because you can get covered. Absolutely covered. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. At the back. Put it as tight as I possibly can. I'm just going to cut a little bit off this because it's kind of making it a lot harder for me. So I'm just going to nip off a few of the little holes just to make it easier for me.
that's if it actually cuts. It's very hard. This. Now, that should make it a bit easier. Get it on. Now, same thing again. Sorted. Now we just need to do exactly the same thing. Put this back inside. Okay, so I've got it all back together. I didn't film it because there was no point. 32 mil bolt tightened, 18 mil bolt underneath, and the 21 mil bolt for the shock. So they've all been tightened and squeezed. So we're good. We've got the new CV boot on. We know where we're going. Now, what I need to do is the inner tie rod and the track rod end because we're getting that noise. Now, what I'm going to show you. Is I'm going to show you how to get the track in fairly close, but and it is so important. This is a big but. You have to get this tracked afterwards. There's no point in me showing you the tracking because if you haven't got tracking gauges at home, well, there's no point. So I'm not going to show you the tracking. I'm just going to show you how to get it close enough so you can go to a place where you can get it tracked. If you don't, you're going to destroy your tyres. So I can only advise you get it tracked. So what we need to do. We need to count the number of rings between the actual track rod end and the inner tie rod. So what I mean now is we need to t count how many threads are sticking out between these two. And as you can see, you can count them there. And we put this one back in more or less the same place. Well, exactly the same place. Now, I can see on here one, two, three threads sticking out. So, now I've done that, I know. I need to get a 13 mil bolt. And what's, what sometimes is a good thing to do, if you can see my finger now, because you might do this and forget how many threads you've actually seen. If you write in where all the muck is, the number, just like that. So that's the number three, because if you, you know, your phone rings or something like that, and you forget at least you have a visual mark of how many threads so we need a 13 mil socket now to get off this now you wouldn't be tightening that with an air gun because you'd snap that bolt in a heartbeat so we need to twist this off obviously the whole thing is twisting together so we need to hold it some vice grips hopefully twist and it's not twisted the other one did <laughs> this one isn't it's just typical right so we've got a couple of options now we either try and make it twist we can get a screwdriver a spanner in there and try and turn it and no it's just completely seized and the reason is because there's a gap here and all the crap and the water gets in here and basically rusts everything together now, because I'm replacing the whole lot, and I can't be asked with trying to unseize that and spending half an hour, an hour to try and twist it off, I'm just going to cut this, just going to cut it off out of the way, be done with it. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Ah. Another good thing about this, you can actually count the number of threads a lot easier now, as you can see. All the crap just gets caught in there and they seize. So what I need to do now is cut off the two, well, there's actually not one there, and there's the one at the back. Maybe just push this, no. Um, they should be a little cable tie here and a cable tie at the back. Now there's only a cable tie at the back, which again is not a problem. We need to cut the cable tie off at the back. Go underneath. Now, let's cut that. This then should slide off. There we go. Turned inside out. And it's just broke. Great. Oh, it's just broke. We need a new gator. The joys. The fucking joys. 
I have to order one of them now. Now, I have universal ones coming so we can get a new gator. No problem. So I need to take off the inner tie rod. Now I have this little gadget, but well, it's not quite little, it's kind of big, as you can see. Hollow in the middle, and this end is a special end to catch the roundness of the inner tie rod, which is there. Now as you can see, that's pure round, so it's not as if you can get a socket or anything on it. So you need a special gadget. This is the one I have because it does a few different sizes. So you slide it in and basically twist it round and eventually it will lock in place. More hands. Right, I'm not too sure what was going on there but basically this bar you put a 30mm sock at the end of it and you have to twist it a few times and it does eventually grab and once I've now I've loosened this once it grabs you just literally keep twisting until it is off now like that now what we have to be careful on this one is there's a couple of different funny clips on it so I'll show you on the new one sorry they're here I'll show you on the new one how they go but basically this little gadget here as it goes in as you can see it actually it locks like that and it, it, it holds them and so it allows you to screw it on and off so it's really gad it's really gad so in our new one we get a little package which we have three three things in now what we need to do is put this little rubber thing over first then now this is important you need to get this the right way I'll take that off first you need to get this the right way these two little lugs see them two little lugs sticking up face up and it's just been a bit of a nightmare to go on oh great this should just go on so easy Oh, it's one of them days. You know, just don't days you're having. I just want to go home now. Nightmare. Anyway, I've put it on the little clip now. Them two little lugs line up with the little lugs on behind, uh, inside this. And then you'll see another lug sticking up on the big washer, which lines up with this side. But what I'm going to do is, so I'm going to put it on there, just make my life that bit easier. I need to get this ring to sit on top of here now that is now done I can get that them little see the little spikes kind of hold on to the actual um, inner tie rod and now what we basically need to do is twist it back in and screw it in Need to get a gadget then, slide it all the way in and twist. Now we're getting tight now, we we'll have to get a bar on that. 30 mil socket and let's and give this a really good uh, I'm in the way of the a really good tight Whew. now I have to wait until I get the gaiters now and then we're sorted now I managed to get a new gaiter and I got one of these which is basically it's a universal one as you can see there's different ridges so you can cut it to size depending on what size ones you have you get two in a pack only a couple of quid so that kind of sorted that out now what I want to do the last bit is just to put the track I'd end on and this one's simple just twist it on now I've got to let three threads but you can just see them in there there's just three threads showing so I've got to screw this in all the way until there's three threads showing now like I said 
This will only get you as far as a place to track the car or van or whatever you happen to be doing. You want to get it tracked because it's just you're wasting your money if you're not. You destroy your tyres, you destroy everything. So one, two, three. I'm just going to put my finger there. So as soon as it hits my finger, I know I'm okay. Now, sit my finger there. I'm going to tighten this bolt in that place. Just tighten that and that moved, so I just need to get that back. There we go. Now, now that's tight. Obviously it doesn't line up with that, but I can twist it. And as I twist this now, you can't see, but I'm twisting the whole thing. So I'm twisting the new inner tie rod. So I know I'm not moving on my mark. So then all I've got to do is line it up with here. Put it down. Put the nut on. And we're sorted. So what you have to do is you have to get this tracked. Honestly, get it tracked. Don't think, even if you drive it down the road and you think, oh, you know, this is fine. Honestly, it's not. Get it tracked. So look, that's it. That's basically the little uh, thing done on the Renault Master. So we've serviced it, we've put brakes on, we've put calipers on, track rod ends, inner tie rods, and a CV boot. So done a lot. And so look, yeah, hope it helps. Thumbs up and subscribe. And don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one.